Hello, I am Victor Paredes and I want to show you how to use the new brushes options. So here we have a simple character and I will just select the vector layer of the head. So you can see I have several shapes here for the head. So with the select shape tool, I will click on select all to select every single shape from this layer. And now I will go here to this square that says no brush in the style window. So I will click here. And here we can select different brushes for this character. So I will just uh, select one, maybe sometimes I think I like this one, all right? And let me show you the options of the brushes here. So you can align the brush with the curve. So you can see if I uncheck this, it is not aligned anymore. So I can align the, the curve. I can change the jitter angle. So you can see how the brush is changing when I change that. I will set it to zero here. Uh, you can also set if you want or don't a random stamp order. So these brushes are just PNG images that you can create also. And some of them are created with several stamps, several images. So if you uncheck this, those images are going to appear in the same order they were created. Okay, but if you want something random, then you just click this. All right, and then you can define the spacing here so i just i'm just dragging the mouse and you can see how the stamps are more separated or closer all right and then we have the merge alpha option usually we don't use this option actually i, I recommend you not to use it what it does is that if you have um actually let me show you here so let's uh, i will just apply it to this ear all right so if i apply alpha to this ear so just some opacity to the layer to the shape sorry the stroke of the shape you can see that each stamp has its own opacity all right and this is how it normally looks and usually you get a better result with this but now if i select this and i set merge alpha now in the preview it looks the same but if i if i render a preview here you can see let me just zoom in you can see that now all the stamps they share the same alpha so you don't see the differences you know you don't see the overlap between the different stamps so you get like a flat alpha there a flat opacity so for some cases maybe it will be useful normally if you are looking for more natural results i recommend you to just um just use it without merging so let me just select all the shapes again and i will go back to the the brush window here uh, so we have merge alpha off and here we have the size variation amplitude this is new on moho 14 so with this one if you increase it the size of the brush across the line is going to grow and become like bigger and smaller so if i make it very big you can see here is thicker and here is thinner and thicker and thinner okay so you can change that and you can see how it is changing here now we have the other option here, the size variation scale. And this number defines how often that variation happens. So if I make this number bigger, it will happen less often. So that means um, there will be less variation across the line. But if I make this number smaller, and actually I can make it very small, you can see how the variation is happening way more often now. So it's growing up and down way quickly. So maybe also it's, it's growing too much. So I will reduce this uh, and maybe increase this a little bit. So yeah, maybe this is what I want. Okay, so you can see now we have a very simple vector, but you can see that the brush is making that change. All right. So now we have this new option that is the smart line boil. Okay. And when I act activate this, I can set uh, an interval for this randomness okay by default it is one so if i hit up okay here and now i play the animation this this character is not doing anything but if i hit play you can see that there is a line boil happening on the brush and this line boil is happening on every single frame if i move with the arrows of the keyboard here i can go frame by frame and you can see how each frame is changing okay now i will select all these shapes again and I will go to the brushes window 
and I will set the interval to trees okay so it will change every three frames so now if I go frame by frame you can see it is changing every three frames now so I can hit play and you can see it changing every three frames now I think the most interesting part of this is that I will select this all again so you can set any interval here but if you select zero and hit OK and now I hit play nothing moves alright because the interval is zero but if I go to the bone layer for instance and I will just freeze the pose here and then I will just rotate this bone down and you can see how while I am rotating this the line is boiling so now if I hit play the line boils only when the character is moving so you can see the character is looking down and you can see the line boiling and once it stops moving the line doesn't move anymore so the idea here is that when you are working traditionally and normally you have line boil the line is going to boil only when the character is moving uh, because if, if the character is not moving no one is actually redrawing it so this is the effect we, we were looking here so the same can happen for instance for the arms if I select the arm here I will select these two shapes and I will select a similar brush here with some variation with line boil of zero and now if later I animate only the arm so I will just create some keyframes for the arm you can see how the arm is changing but only when it moves and if I move the entire body so let me just freeze the entire pose here and I will move the entire body down and maybe then up then you can see that everything moves because the entire body is moving all right but the software is always moving the things only when when the character is actually moving now here if you see the boiling it is happening on once and this is because the bones are moving on once that means that the bone is is rotating in every single frame but I can select these keyframes and I can set the interval to be, I don't know, on trees. Okay? And that means this bone is going to move every three frames instead of every frame. So, so you can see it is moving every three frames instead. So now the boiling is also going to happen every three frames. Alright? So you can define how the boiling happens by defining the interval of the bones. If you want to have a, a more clear idea of... Um, of how the bones are moving on trees or on twos or on whatever interval you can select one bone and then go to the motion graph here double click on the rotation because this bone is rotating and here you can see how the interval is working so here it's the movement is happening every three frames I could change that to be every two frames and here you can see how it changes or every one frame so that will define the boiling so or every six frames and now it will almost not move all right but the boiling effect is going to happen only when the bone is moving okay so let's keep it on twos here and now finally what I want to show you is that this boiling effect is not happening only when you move the the bones it also happens when you move the vector themselves so let me if I select the head layer of the vectors and I, I will, I'm going to freeze this pose here and now I'm going to move let's say I'm going to move these two points here and these two points here and maybe also the mouth is going to be um, a bit bigger here okay the, the tracing of this character is not great <laughs> I need to fix it better but anyway I just move that and you can see that the vectors and the boiling effect is only happening when the vectors are moving and the vectors are moving on once so it will happen on, on once but I can still select all these keyframes and change it to twos and it is going to move on twos so you can give a much uh, more natural result to your character so even when it is rigged it can look like someone is actually drawing it something that is uh, nice too is that let me just uh, create a group for the head so I will call this group head 
and I will create a new layer here, okay? And I will call this layer texture, right? And now using the freehand tool, I will use a very big freehand tool, and I will just draw some lines here. I know this is very bad, but let me just select this shape now, and I'm going to change the brush. So maybe I'm going to use this brush, and maybe we do some jitter here, and I will apply also some scale variation and some line boil of zero here. All right, and now I'm going to apply a blending mode to see if that works better in this case. And I need to activate the effect, sorry. I, I had the effects deactivated here. So I'm going to check uh, what blending mode could work for this. Okay, let's say, okay, let's say overlay for now, and I will, st I can change the color of this, so, yeah, let's say red with more alpha, okay, this is a very bad blending, <laughs> I mean, for this case, so let's go to something Ah, and also it has uh, some fill. I didn't want to create a fill here. So maybe... Okay, maybe overlay here. So you can see there is a little texture, nothing too fancy happening, but I can still um, paint some more texture here. And maybe select all and I will just increase the opacity and maybe change the color there. All right, let, let's suppose I like this. Okay, so I have some texture over the character, but now this texture is coming, um, I mean, it's outside of the head, so I need the head to mask this texture. So I will right click on this group and go to mask and mask inside of the bottom layer. So that means the head is masking the texture. All right, and now I'm going to bind I'm going to select the texture layer, select the bone layer, and I'm going to link the bone to this texture. So this texture is going to move with this bone. All right. And now since this line also has some boiling effect, you can see that the texture vibrates when the, mo the bone moves. So you can also apply that. So basically you can have like moving textures in your character by just painting something with the brushes. Let me just try something different here. So maybe something more like that. And then I can even duplicate this texture. And maybe in this case, instead of overlay, overlay, I'm going to apply another blending mode, or maybe not, maybe multiply here. So maybe multiply, but with less opacity. Uh, like that. So anyway, I can paint some texture here. And now you can see this texture is going to vibrate only when the character moves. So it can be a cool effect too. So yeah, those are the new brush options. I, I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for watching. Bye.